we've been talking about. What if it is real? And I'm going to share with you a story about happened this week at work. You know, I've, I've told you folks that uh, sometimes when we're putting a sermon together, I don't plan on this, but things happen in my life that directly either go with or go against what we've been sharing on Sundays here. The Holy Spirit is quick to bring to my realization what comes across these lips. And he's quick to convict me and say, are you going to do what you say or are you going to be a hypocrite? And that's a decision every one of us make every day. Are we going to do what we say we're going to do? Or are we going to go about life just, just as life? This week at work, we're building a brand new product line. And it's very intense. It's very, uh, it's very uh, difficult for me to understand all the functions of these projects because I'm not an engineer. I don't write code. I don't, I'm not an engineer. But we have a fellow in our company, the head engineer, and he is one heck of a great guy. I respect this man. I appreciate his knowledge. He's the kind of guy that he never builds himself up, you know. He doesn't walk around real arrogant or anything. He's always there to dig in with you and help. And if it's something brand spanking new that we've never done, he'll stand right there beside me as we're wiring in the 440 and the 220 and the 110 and then the 24 volts that actually make the relays click. And he'll be right there with me. And when it goes boom, he's usually closer to it than I am. And he'll start to laugh and he'll go, well, it didn't do that on paper. <laughs> And we'll dig in and we'll rebuild things. He's a good guy. He's a wonderful person. And I've never had a chance to share Christianity with him. Now by faith, guys, we believe that this universe was created, don't we? We don't believe it just happened that a turtle crawled out of the sea with a little chunk of dirt on his back, and that began life. We, we don't believe that. We believe God created things. We believe that every teaching in the Bible is factual, is true, it is God-breathed. Second Timothy tells us that every scripture was God-breathed. It wasn't just happenstance. It actually happened. We believe that there's good in this world and we believe that there's bad in this world. We believe that there is a place called heaven and we believe that there is a place called hell. And we believe that man has been given the opportunity to make a choice in his own mind what way he chooses or wishes to spend eternity. We also believe that one's lives should reflect the decisions in which they have made. If you are choosing to go to heaven, then your life should reflect that choice you've made. And if you choose the other, then your life will reflect that. Let me explain just a little. This week, a lady at the shop, when I was down in the pit worker, come over, and she said she found a passage of Scripture in Acts 1 in regards to Judas. As the church she's going to practices Lent, this is a season of Lent where they review the Easter story over and over again, and they even pick it apart and talk about each individual person. And her question to me it was, why in Matthew 27 is the exact same account recorded differently? Why is Matthew 27 totally different 
than Acts 1. Now guys, let me share something with you. When you got 440 this far from your forehead and 220 in your hands, you really don't want to be talking about this, okay? <laughs> I get a little uptight when I'm working with high voltage stuff. And this engineer was standing right beside me. And he spoke up in a joking manner and looked at this lady and said this, you can't base all your thoughts in this life over what a bunch of people said a thousand years ago. You can't do that. You see, every one of us see things differently. And I'm sure they did back then as well. You can't put your trust in things like this. That's what he said. What would you say? This is a guy who for eight years has helped you through this company become what you are today. This guy has helped me from the day I hired in to build these products and test these products. He's helped me train fellow technicians and folks to do this work. And because of the knowledge he's shared with me, it's allowed me to grow in the company as well. He's like my buddy, you know? And we've always talked work. We've never talked the Bible. It was really hard for me to hear this. He's helped me all through my time there. And I simply looked at him and I said this. I believe the Bible is holy. And I believe that every word in it was inspired by God. Every word was written specifically to help the folks back then and to help us today. In this very day and age. He patted me on the back and replied with a grin. I've seen accidents where the police have questioned four people and have had four different accounts of the accident. I seen a robbery once in downtown Chicago where I knew the clerk was face to face with this man, but when the police came, she could not give a description. He goes, Dan, you can't always trust what's written in a book. How do we answer or explain a situation like that, guys? Could have I shared with him the truth of Jesus? Sure. You know what I did? I simply said, Jim, I know where you stand. Let's get back to work. And we started working on the project again. Jesus Christ, unless a person is open to the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ our Lord and the Holy Spirit will not force it on them. They won't put them down so bad that they have no way but to call out to God. God is a respecter of you and me. He created us. He loves us. And unless the person is the point in their lives that they feel they need to call upon their Lord. They won't. They won't. And intelligent people just go through life. Everything is a coincidence. Everything will work out. And they lose the fact that there is a God who's watching over them. Now, would I call this person a bad person? Absolutely not. 
He's one of the nicest men any of you will meet. He'll be invited to Jake's graduation party. He's a good guy. Y'all might need him if you go. I have respect for this man. I love this guy, you know? But somewhere in his heart, he hasn't accepted Christ. Doesn't make him a bad guy. Makes him a guy we need to pray for. I want to read to you tonight this account that this lady was so worked up about. Together, let's see if we can't solve this. Chapter 1 of Acts, verses 12 through 22. And you'll find this on page 770. Now, to be honest with you guys, I like the King James account a little better. But we'll use the NIV tonight. It says, Then they returned from Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scriptures have been fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouths of David concerning Judas, who served as guide for those who arrested Jesus. He was one of our number and shared in his ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this. So they called the field in their language a Keladama, that is, field of blood. For, said Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may this place be deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us the whole time. The Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with his resurrection. Now, I always thought Judas hung himself. Didn't you? Matthew 27 tells us, we'll read it here in a minute, that Judas hung himself. This tells us that with his money he bought a field and fell headlong and his bellies burst out. Sorry for the graphic nature there. This is what she said. How can this be? How can this happen? I've been taught since a little girl. Our pastor read that Sunday and she said, I asked him what version of the Bible he was reading. I never heard that. She said, I got upset. I said, you don't need to be upset. It's in there. But there's got to be a reasonable explanation for this. I said, let's look at Matthew 27. Do you read that tonight? I'll read X. We'll talk tomorrow. Now, Matthew 27 verses 1 through 10 tells us this. Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people came to the decision to put Jesus to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. 